Hi, this is just a quick audio on why I support atheism. A lot of Christians do, I'm not alone. But you don't find in YouTube or elsewhere too many um, Christians will stand up for supporting atheism. So I'm going to give you my reasons and then you do with that whatever you want, okay? I just feel that it's incumbent on me as a Christian to state this. The first reason I support atheism is because I honestly and truly understand, belatedly, how difficult a thing it is to believe that God even exists, let alone which kind. And secondly, the second point, is I strongly, oh, I, I, couldn't, I, I can't even say this strongly enough, I strongly believe that you should not, repeat, should not believe in any kind of God until you have proof. The most disgusting thing a person can do is to believe that God exists and he doesn't have proof. It's a false belief then. It's a lie. If I believe in something absent proof, my belief is worthless. And and even worse, it's like it's hypocritical and it's a lie. Because if you just buy something cuz somebody says so, then you don't respect what it was they said. And I'm sorry, but a whole lot of Christians and a whole lot of Muslims and a whole lot of Buddhists or whatever, they just adhere to that faith because that's part of their own group of people. That's hypocritical, I'm sorry. If you don't believe in God, fine, don't believe. But if you do believe, don't you shouldn't be believing because your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your country, your culture, your tribe says that's the truth. You're dishonoring whatever God exists by doing that. I'm sorry, I, I, I really have a very strong attitude about this. So to close the, that point, I don't believe that you should believe in a God of any kind until you have proof. So you bet I'm for atheism. They're trying to be honest. Right or wrong, they're trying to be honest. So point three, that's the closing point about why I support atheism. Be honest. Now, to be honest, it's also true, and you can prove it pretty easily, that a whole lot of people are atheists just because their brother, their sister, their father, their mother, or somebody they like is an atheist. That's dishonest. Don't be an atheist for that reason. Be an atheist because of your own reasons, irrespective of anybody else. I guarantee you, I'm a Christian not because of people around me who believe. In the beginning, of course, you know, we all believe things because we're told when we're kids. But by the time you reach your 20s, you should start thinking on your own. And not be afraid to diverge from your family or your tribe or your group. Because you yourself don't have the proof that they, they claim they got. So honesty is the next reason why I support atheism, the third reason. Um, if somebody honestly says, look, I don't have proof of God, so I don't believe God exists, well and good, I'm, I, I applaud you for being honest. There's a fourth reason why I support atheism, which is kind of weird, I suppose. Atheists come up with arguments against God and against the Bible that the typical Christian, anyway, doesn't consider. And I think that God himself supports atheism for that reason. I mean, he actually supports freedom, so he's going to support atheism because it's an honest conclusion you can make. And he supports anything that's honest. But at the same time, you know, we Christians get into our little snits about proving the Bible right and all this other stuff. Or proving our denomination right as if God wasn't important at all, but we're just football teams. And God wants to, like, you know, shake us up out of our complacency or out of our idiocy. 
If we didn't have atheists, we, who would help us? So I'm really grateful to all the atheists who argue, whether they argue well or badly, honestly or dishonestly. Because it helps shake up the Christian mindset, or the Jewish mindset, or the Muslim mindset. We need you guys. And the fifth reason I support atheism is my own freedom. I reserve the right, and under God who I know already, not just believe in anymore, under God I have the right to become an atheist tomorrow. I will never lose that right. The God I know is a God of freedom. And he bends over backwards to ensure freedom. So I have the right to listen to any atheist I want. I have the right to become an atheist tomorrow. I have the right to become a Muslim or a Baha'i or a Buddhist tomorrow. I also have the right to doubt whatever it is I think I know about God. And in fact, God keeps on encouraging everybody to doubt Him. I mean, look at how the Bible is written. It either makes you fall asleep in five minutes, or it makes you think that it's written by a crazy person. If God exists and He wrote the Bible, then He did it on purpose to write it like that. Yeah, He used human agents. A lot of the stuff in there is human knowledge. There's nothing miraculous about it. The miracle is elsewhere. The miracle is in the consistency of the doctrines from Genesis to Revelation, but I don't want to bore you with, you know, talking about that. The point is, is that the Bible is written in a way that makes you doubt it. On purpose. And doubt is sanity. Hear me loud and clear. Doubt is sanity. Insanity is dogma. So if you're dogmatic about being an atheist, then something's wrong with you. If you're dogmatic about being a Christian, something's wrong with you. If you're dogmatic about whatever faith you've got about God, re his existence, his non-existence, or his nature, or his holy books, if you're dogmatic about it, then your mind isn't working properly. Doubt is the key to sanity. So I guess we'll call that point six, why I favor atheism. I'm not an atheist, and likely I won't become one, because I keep on knowing God every day. I have a very strong relationship with Him. And He's very different from me, so I know the difference between my hallucinations and His thinking. But, doubt is the key to sanity. So I'm constantly doubting whatever I say, even while I talk. And I constantly go back over whatever it was I said or wrote, or thought, or believed, and checking it, and auditing it for correctness. Because, hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? Okay, I have a false belief. It's like a broken window. You fix it. whoop de doo What I believe and who I am are two different things. But if I equate my believing with my identity, then I have gone nuts. And that's what religion does to people. It makes them equate their identity with their religion. And if God exists, he doesn't need religion, hello. Sorry. I mean, if God exists, it's about a relationship with God, and religion is totally irrelevant. Okay, but how do you know if God exists? And that's where the atheist is, is making his good points. How do you know? And my only answer to you is this. If God exists, He enables you to know. If God exists, then He's immaterial, and you are too. And He can make Himself known to you by means of thought. And I'll, I'll post an audio on that. And you can listen to it or not. But there is a way to prove God's existence, but it isn't by, you know, material means, because if God exists, by definition, he's immaterial and invisible. So how do you know if you're not hallucinating? Well, there's a way to find out. Actually, three ways. And I'll post that as my next audio. Peace out.